Hey, sixth grade math students. I am so excited. Look at what I ordered and arrived at my house yesterday. I have a uh, funny picture of a not so happy Mr. Sayward last night putting together this like gigantic, look at this thing. Like my arm span doesn't even reach across this gigantic whiteboard. So I think perhaps Mrs. Sayward may have gone over the top with this purchase, but it's making me super happy. So is that what matters? Anyway, so we're on to lesson 3.4 in the textbook, which is all about expanding algebraic expressions. And so we talked about expanding and factoring in the sixth grade program, um, but it's a really important concept to understand pretty much that when we're expanding expressions, we're creating equivalent expressions. So we're not actually solving for anything because again, it's an expression. We don't have an equal sign here. My head, I'm gonna have to get used to this. We don't have an equal sign here. So this is an expression, this is not an equation. So we're not solving anything when we're expanding. And of course, remember the inverse of expanding or the opposite of expanding is factoring. So um, what we're doing is really just creating equivalent expressions. And so you're like, well, why do I need to know how to do this? And it's just really so you're familiar with um, the different ways that expressions and numbers can be represented. It's also going to have you practice um, applying your negative rules, both with multiplying, um, addition, subtraction. So it's really just kind of getting you used to playing with numbers in different ways. So in 3.4, it's all about expanding expressions. Then where we're headed with 3.5 is going to be factoring expressions. So over here, um, lesson 3.4 actually starts with fractions, okay? And then you're going to see over here, page 155 goes into expanding with decimals. So if you want to follow along in your book, the front page um, represents things in models, which is helpful for you to just check out and see that you understand. I am moving forward with... <clears throat> showing you how to solve these problems um, with your mathematical rules, okay? But if you want to check out the bar models on the first page, please do so. Okay, so on the top of page 154, you will see the problem 1 half times 2x plus 4. And what we are going to do when we are expanding an expression is essentially using the distributive property, right? We're going to distribute the one half, which is outside of the parentheses, to both of the terms that are inside of the parentheses. Um, so common mistake is, we've talked about this before, is that you'll just, a lot of kids will distribute to the first term and then in kind of their excitement or rushing, they forget to distribute that one half to the second term. So that's kind of my heads up to you guys and girls. Common misconception or common error is to distribute to the first term but not to the second. So when we are doing one half times two, one half, and I might do it on the side. I know you're all like, I know how to do this, Mrs. Sayward, but I'm just going to model it for you. So what I wrote there is 1 half times 2x over 1, right? Because that represents the same thing. I just put 2x over 1, but we cannot forget about the variable x. So 1 half times 2x over 1 would give me 1 times 2x is 2x, and 2 times 1 is 2. So when I distributed that positive 1 half to positive 2x, I got 2x over 2. And of course, we know this is this, these are going to cancel each other out because it's like saying 2 divided by 2, which is 1. So 1 half times 2x gives me x. Then I have 1 half times positive 4. So 1 half 
times positive 4. So see how I modeled that there? So 1 half times 4 over 1. 1 times 4 is 4, and 2 times 1 is 2, and 4 halves is equal to positive 2. So it's important when I keep saying positive 2 because we are going to write it as x plus 2 or positive 2. But when I distributed this 1 half, I did, like we've been doing all along, I needed to pull in that operational symbol here, that it's adding for or positive for. And that's going to come into play more so when you're dealing with negatives. The first couple pages of this lesson, I don't believe, uh, yeah, they do give one negative. We'll see with the decimals, but <clears throat> they purposefully kind of try to ease you in with the positives and not rolling in a lot of negatives. But you guys are going to do fabulous. You're awesome. You're going to know what to do with the negatives, but I'll highlight that for you. So again, one half with parentheses of 2x plus 4 is equivalent to x plus 2. So if I wanted to write that out, 1 half 2x plus 4 is equivalent to x plus 2. We've got that right here. So what we are doing, or we're expanding expressions, we're using the distributive property simply to make an equivalent expression. When we see 1 half times this, we could actually, the same way of saying 1 half, is the same as saying dividing it by two, right? Because one half times something, we could also divide it by two. So this is a visual way that also makes it kind of easy for you to see. Two x divided by two gives me x, and positive four divided by two gives me positive two. So I thought that visual might show that to you as well. Okay, so we've got another Example here with one third. Let's see if you need me to move that over at all. All right. One third times 3x plus 15. So again, I'm going to distribute my one third to 3x. So I'm going to say one third times 3x over 1, right? 1 times 3x is 3x. 3 times 1 is 3. 3x three over 3 is the same as saying x, right? Because the 3 divided by 3 equals 1, and 1x one is the same as just saying x, okay? But remember I told you common mistake is kids forget to distribute to the second term. So you're not going to make that mistake because you guys are, guys and girls are rock stars. So because I have a positive and a positive, you know me, I like to put in my operation signs just so I don't forget them. And it also helps me to be like aware of it. Like, all right, I'm consciously looking at this problem and seeing this is a positive times a positive. So I know a positive times a positive is a positive. So I go down here and say, all right, well, what's one third? times 15. We can use our good old friend here of cross simplifying. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 15 five times. Well, 1 times 5 is 5, and 1 times 1 is 1. So x plus 5 is an equivalent expression to 1 third times 3x plus 15. Okay. Hope that all makes sense. Okay, so the next part of the lesson is doing the same thing with expanding expressions, but now they're giving us decimals. So I feel like maybe I didn't write this as clearly, but this is 2 tenths times 4x plus 3. Um, so over here I'm going to distribute my 2 tenths times 4x, because remember, when anything's written directly outside of the parentheses, it means multiplication. So, I am going to say, I end up writing my whole number on top, although we know with multiplication, the order doesn't necessarily matter. So, 4 times 2 is 8, right? But 
what am I going to do now? How many decimal places over do I, how many decimal places over do I need to go? So we've been doing decimal multiplication this year, and you would say, well, I know that I start, you know, to the right of the number and move over. I move one place value over because there's one place value here with two tenths, so my answer would be eight tenths. The other way I could look at it is saying, well, I know that this is 0.2 plus 0.2 plus 0.2 plus 0.2, right? Because it's 0.2 four times. 0.2 plus 0.2 plus 0.2 plus 0.2 is 0.8 or eight tenths. But I can't forget my trusty old x here, right? Because this was 4x, right? So I have here 0.8x. Or this is saying what is 2 tenths of 4, okay? So here we have 8 tenths, and then we've got 0.2 times 3. Well, 0.2, 3 times 2 is 6. And again, we move the decimal place over to the left because this is the same as saying 0.2 plus 0.2 plus 0.2, which is equal to 0.6. So this is a positive times another positive. I just forgot my uh, own rule here. I always write my operation symbol in there. I put that a little close to the x. Doesn't really matter, but you know me. I like my meat, my work meat. So 0.8x or 8 tenths x plus 6 tenths. These are equivalent expressions. Okay? Equivalent expressions. All I did was expand this one to get this. Make sense? All right, now we've got 7 tenths times 2 tenths t minus 3. So we see here we have a negative. That should send your like alarm, but not alarm bells, but like, hey, heads up, I'm going to need to apply my negative rules. But since you're all so fabulous with your negative rules, like you totally got this. I know it. So 7 tenths times 2 tenths. So I'm going to go over here and say 7 tenths times 2 tenths. 7 times 2 is 14, right? But now I've got two decimal places that I need to go over. Because I've got one here and one here. One, two. Seven tenths times two tenths is 14 hundredths. But I don't just have 14 hundredths on its own. Remember, this two tenths has a variable t. So it's 14 hundredths t. I can't forget that variable because that's really, really important. That t is going to represent another value. Um, now I'm saying to myself, all right, I've got a positive 7 tenths, and I'm going to multiply it by a negative 3. So remember how I remind you that I like to write in my symbols? A positive times a negative means that my answer is going to be negative. I'm going to, well, that's going to drive me crazy. That is not neat enough. Um, I am going to tell you that step of multiplying to the second term, especially when the second term has a, in this, a subtraction symbol, which is also representing the opposite of three, which is negative three. When it has a subtraction sign, which represents the opposite or the negative of that number or that term, Kids often forget that it's the negative sign. So that's, I'm kind of giving you a heads up, like it's it's much easier to remember when, when everything's positive. This is when it gets more challenging. It's not harder conceptually, it's more just being careful and precise in your work. So, where's my eraser? Now I've got 7 tenths times 3. It's actually negative 3, but I've written my negative sign in there, so I feel good to go. 7 times 3 is 21, but remember, this is like saying 7 tenths 3 times, which would be like 7 tenths plus 7 tenths plus 7 tenths, 
which would be 2.1, right? Two and one tenth. So 0.7 times three, or times negative three, is negative two and one tenths, okay? This expression is equal to 0 0.7 times 0 0.2t minus three. What we've done is expanded this expression to get this equivalent expression, and I'm just bringing them both back, that these are equivalent to each other. 7 tenths times 2 tenths t is 14 hundredths t minus 7 tenths times negative 3 is negative 2.1. All right. Hope that makes sense. You're going to do some practice problems before we move on to trying more expanding expressions. Woohoo! I am so excited about my whiteboard, if you can't tell. Okay, since I'm having so much fun on the whiteboard, and I know that you guys are having so much fun watching me on the whiteboard, I figured I would just do a few more examples and then I'm gonna let you get to it. But um, it's just such an important concept. I just wanna go over a few more examples with you to make sure everybody's understanding what we are doing here. So, one fourth x, I mean one fourth, sorry, times four x plus eight. So one fourth times four x is the same as saying four x over four, right? And we've got a positive times a positive. So what I'm gonna do in that case is just x out, right? The four and the four cancel each other out because they're equal to one. So where's my eraser? This is just positive x, okay? So I've distributed my one fourth, which is the same as saying four x divided by four, right? Which is why we say that it's x. Um, one fourth times positive eight. So I'm going to put my positive sign, right, addition sign, because I've got a positive times a positive. One-fourth times eight is eight. That is a not a very attractive eight. Sorry about that. Eight over four, which is the same as saying x plus two. Love it, right? All right. One-third times 6b plus 9. So if you notice a pattern, like we've got 4x and 8, and we've got 4 here, right? So we all have, um, right now, multiples of 4. If you look over here, we've got thirds, so 3, 6, 9, right? we get got multiples of 3. So in the beginning, they're going to be nice to you and give you numbers that are going to go in um, pretty easily. They will make it harder, but right now we're easing in so we get numbers that are working well and uh, are friendly with each other. So one third times six B is the same as saying six B over three, right? Six B times one is six B. And then this is just over one, one, three times one is three. But I know that I can simplify that, right? Six B over three is the same as saying 2b, right? Because 6 divided by 3, or 3 goes into 6 two times, and we keep our variable. If I wanted to do it on the side, just to be extra um, vigilant, I could. And 1 times 6b is 6b, and 3 times 1 is 3, so that's where I'm getting that answer from, okay? So next, I have positive, right? Positive times a positive. So I'm putting in that operation sign. One third times nine is the same as saying nine over three, right? I'll model it down here. One third times nine is the same as saying nine over three, which is the same as saying plus three, right? Because three can go into nine three times. So my equivalent expression for one third times 6b plus 9 is 2b plus 3. To be or not to be. I'm so, Matthew studying Shakespeare. Sorry, some of you maybe got that joke and others didn't. And it doesn't really matter because it doesn't connect with math anyway. These are just the things that go through Mrs. Sayward's head. All right, so 6b, I'm just modeling and showing you, again, one third times 6b plus 9 is the same as saying 6b plus 9 
divided by three. Again, not very neat reading, sorry. Um, and we look up here and that makes sense, right? 6B divided by three is the same as 2B. <laughs> 2B or not, I'm sorry. Plus nine or positive nine divided by positive three is positive three. So I'm just representing this another way, just trying to fire off all those mathematical neurons and hopefully they're connecting for you. All right, last two, we're into our decimals. Two tenths times three X. And I will admit, I like to do my decimal multiplication out because I don't know, I'm just funny that way. So three times two is six. And we know it's really two tenths. So it's like two tenths plus two tenths plus two tenths, right? Because we've got three of them. So we distribute that out and that is 0 0.6 or six tenths X. And then we've got a positive times a positive. So I'm gonna put my positive sign in. Two tenths times four. Four times two tenths. Four times two is eight. Move my decimal place over one uh, decimal point or one decimal place because we only have it to the tenths here. So one decimal place to account for, which it makes sense because two tenths plus two tenths plus two tenths plus two tenths is eight tenths. So plus eight tenths. Um, and of course, because you know I like we're like kind of going over math vocabulary. We've got a coefficient, we've got a variable, and we've got a constant, right? And then last example that I'm going to do, 6 tenths times 3. So 0.6 times 3, and I've got 1.8. So 1.8H. Oh, wow, all right. Uh, 6 tenths times 5, and I've got a pos positive times a positive. So I'm putting in my positive sign here and then 0.6 literally my cats decided to fight while I'm doing this 6 tenths times 5 well 6 times 5 is 30 but this is a whole number so I don't need to move the decimal place over and this is to the tenth so I move it over 1 so 3 6 tenths times 5 is 3 so plus and that would make sense. Again, I'm probably overkill, but I just like to show you if I added six tenths up five times, I would get three. So six tenths times five, positive five, is three. So the equivalent expression, six tenths times three h plus five, is one and eight tenths h plus three. All right. Hope you all had fun expanding today. Now I'm going to have you do. A little bit of Kahoot, but then I am going to have you submit your answers also um, in either Google Doc or Google, Google Form. I haven't made it yet, but it's a little bit hard for me to tell which ones you're getting right on the Kahoot. So as much as I want to make things fun for you guys, I also really do want to make sure you're getting the concept too. So I'm going to try to do a little bit of both. Some Kahoot and some Google Doc slash Google Form so I can actually see your answers. All right. I miss you all. I hope you had fun. I hope, can you tell? I love my whiteboard. Hope you enjoyed it too. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.